Lesson 2, Part Design Workbench, created in Lesson 1. The object of this lesson is to complete the L-shaped excursion started in Lesson 1. When you complete this lesson, the L-shaped excursion will be a T-shaped excursion and look similar to what is shown. Lesson 2 Objectives. This lesson will show you how to do the following. Select the Part Design Workbench. Open the L-shaped extrusion.cat part. Review pad creation. Create a several different fillets. Create a chamfer. Create a place holes. Create patterns. Modify the existing L-shaped extrusion. Translate entities. Rotate entities. Use a symmetry tool. Mirror entities. Scale entities. Create part design constraints. Apply material to entities. Manage the specification tree. Customize the specification tree. Review the design process. Save the file. And last, exit CATIA B5. Part Design Workbench Toolbars. There are seven standard toolbars found in Part Design Workbench. The Sketcher Toolbar consists of the Sketcher Tool. This provides access to the Sketcher Tool. This provides access to the Sketcher Workbench. This is where the Sketch Tools are made available for creating profiles. The Sketch Base Feature Toolbar consists of the Shaft Tool. This creates a solid by resolving a sketch around an axis. The Shaft Tool requires the Axis Tool found in the Sketcher Workbench to define the axis of rotation. The Groove Tool creates a groove in existing solid by resolving a sketch around an axis. Other entities, such as edges of other solids, can be used. The Hold Tool creates a variety of hold tools, including tapered, simple, counterboard, countersunk, and counterdrilled. Although this is the part design workbench, it creates a sketch that can be modified in sketch workbench. The Rib Tool creates a rib by sweeping a profile along a center curve. This creates the profile sketch, then creates another sketch defining the curve or path that can provide the rib tool. It creates a rib by sweeping a profile along a center curve. It creates a profile sketch and then creates another sketch defining the curve path that the profile will be swept along. The slot tool it creates a slot by sweeping a profile along a center curve. The profile does not have to be closed profile. The center curve can be an existing entities. The profile is subtracted from the intersecting or ex existing solid. The stiffener tool creates a stiffener. Requires a sketch. The sketch does not have to be a closed profile. The loft tool creates a solid loft. Requires a closed profile and spine to define the path. Removed loft creates a negative loft. Same as the loft tool, except that materials is subtracted from the existing solid. An existing solid is required to subtract from. The solid tool bar consists of the pad tool. This creates a pad or solid. The pad tool creates a pad or otherwise a solid by extruding a profile sketch. The profile can be an open or closed profile. Note that in most cases, closed profiles are easier to work with. The Draft Fillet Pad Tool. This creates a pad with drafts and fillets. The tool saves several steps by building in two of the dress-up tools. The Multi-Pad Tool. This creates a multi-pad part with various thicknesses. This requires multiple closed profiles in the same sketch. The tool allows the user to define the thickness of each closed profile. The Pocket Tool Bar consists of the Pocket Tool. This creates a pocket by removing material defined by the selected profile. Opposite of the pad tool, it subtracts material. Requires an existing solid to subtract from. The draft fillet pocket tool. This creates a pocket with drafts and fillets. Another tool with dress-up tools built in. Multi-pocket tool. Creates multi-pockets with various thicknesses. Opposite of the multi-pad. Requires an existing solid to subtract from. The Transformation Features Toolbar consists of the Scaling Tool. Scales a body by using a point or a face or a plane. The Mirror Tool 
mirrors a body using a plane or face. The transformation toolbar consists of the translation tool. It translates a specific body. The user must specify the direction, distance, and body to translate. The rotation tool rotates a specific body. The user must specify the axis, angle of the rotation, and body to rotate. The symmetry tool mirrors a body without keeping the original body. Patterns toolbar consists of rectangular pattern tool. This creates a rectangular pattern. The user specifies the rectangular pattern values and the features to repeat. Circular pattern tool creates a circular pattern. The user specifies the circular pattern values and the feature to repeat. The user pattern tool creates a pattern defined by the user. The dress up features toolbar consists of the following. Chamfer, the shell tool. Shell is an existing body. The user specifies the face to remove and the thickness of the shell. The thickness tool adds or removes thickness from an existing body. The user specifies the face to thicken and the value of the add thickness. Thread tap tool creates a thread or tap. The fillet toolbar consists of edge fillet tool. This creates a fillet using edges or faces. The variable radius fillet tool. The variable radius fillet tool creates a variable radius fillet. The face face fillet tool creates a face-to-face -face fillet using two faces. The tritangent fillet tool creates a fillet by removing a face. The user specifies two faces to create a fillet between and then the face to be removed. The draft toolbar consists of the draft angle tool. This creates a draft on existing body. The user specifies the direction to the draft, faces to the draft, and the angle of the draft. Draft reflect line tool creates a draft reflect line. Variable draft tool creates a variable draft. The annotation toolbar consists of text with leader tool. This creates text with a leader. This allows a user to attach text to a feature in the part design workbench. The text can be placed in hide and show for future reference. The flag note tool. This creates a flag note. The flag note can be linked to a file and or an URL. The flag note can also be placed in a hide and show for future reference. The constraints toolbar consists of the constraints defined in dialog box tool. This shows the user the type of constraint that is available for the entities selected. The user must select the entities before the tool is available for selection. The constraint tool. This creates a constraint between the two different entities. The surface base features toolbar consists of the thick surface tool. It creates a thickness for a face or surface. This tool allows a user to add thickness on both sides. The split tool. It splits a body into two separate entities using a plane, face, or surface. The closed surface tool. It closes a surface as a body can be created. The closed surface tool. It closes a surface so a body can be created. The sew surface tool sews a face or surface into a body. All of the tools just discussed can also be accessed from the insert pull down menu. This method of tool selection is helpful to the new user because of all the tool names are visible.